Hey people, it's Joachim from BarkVideo.com. Today I have a pretty interesting tutorial and let me just uh, dive right into it and show you what we will be making. It's a hand and it's drawing. A couple circles there. What could it be? Oranges? No, I think not. Oranges and a banana? No. <laughs> it's a face. All right. And this is all digital, by the way, except um, you know, the photo of the hand is obviously also digital, but it is my actual hand that's drawing there. And we're gonna, I'm going to show you a really cool trick how to make this uh, fairly easy. So a couple of things before we get started. What you need uh, in order to be able to follow this tutorial is you need Photoshop. As you can see, I'm in Photoshop right now. And you need a piece of software called ScreenFlow. And that is a screencast software that you can use for, uh, you know, you can use it for recording whatever you're doing on screen. And I think it's only made for Mac, so this tutorial is only for you guys, uh, those of you guys who are using Mac. So I'm sorry. Sorry to all you PC people out there. <laughs> this is only a Mac tutorial. Um, so you need Photoshop, ScreenFlow, and ultimately you need uh, After Effects. So you start out by opening Photoshop, making a new document. I have a preset here. Uh, you can make it whatever dimensions you want. Uh, I'm just going to make it a, uh, an HD format here, uh, 1920 by 1080. Nice large uh, document here. All right. I'm going to make a new layer. I'm too lazy to call it anything. It doesn't really matter. Just make a new layer. And then I'm using my Wacom tablet to draw. You can also use your mouse, but the Wacom board is uh, really an invaluable tool if you want to actually make drawings inside of Photoshop or whatever. So I am just think I'm just going to go with 10 pixel brush here, hard brush. And yeah. So what you do before you start drawing inside your, your uh, inside Photoshop, you start ScreenFlow. And I can't really show you how to start ScreenFlow because ScreenFlow is already recording what I'm doing right here. But you, you want to start up ScreenFlow and, you know, basically just set it up to start recording the screen. So you just start by, you know, drawing something. I think I'm going to draw a face like in the video I saw before. So I'm going to start out by drawing a couple of eyes here. Oh, baby. Yep. Could be a bicycle as well, but I think I'm going to go with the eyes. You got a pretty funky nose there. And we have, oh, yeah, let's make him happy. Let's make him happy. We'll some details in the eyes. And I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on this. It's going to be fairly quick and dirty. All right, so this is the face that's coming down here. A little detail there. All right. Not going to spend more time on this drawing here. So let's say it's done. And uh, then you want to stop the recording. You know, once you've recorded your drawing in Photoshop, you want to go up to screen flow and say stop recording. So I'm going to do that now. All right, you guys, I stopped the previous recording. And now I'm looking at actually the edit of uh, of this tutorial. This is the, the editing file for this tutorial. Um, all right. But the part that I want to use, uh, let's just export from the very beginning here. So I'm just going to set press I to set the endpoint. And I'm just going to play it for you. So I'm going to start out by drawing a couple of eyes here. Oh. Yeah, so that's what we just recorded. And let's just stop it. Uh, right there. Yeah. So I press O to set the out point here. So this is just the this is the only piece that will be exported. And once I have that set, this is where the interesting part inside ScreenFlow begins. This is where the magic happens. First of all, I am going to set the uh, crop area. I'm just going to save real quick. Uh, set the crop area. Let's click this icon down here to the left and set the canvas to be 1920 by 1080, which was the format that we used in, uh, in Photoshop. So with that set, I will drag that area 
uh, and we'll turn off snapping that was kind of annoying and try to just position it right inside so you just get the white canvas of your Photoshop document and you click you click apply okay so now what you want to do is select your video layer down here and then go to screen recording properties which is this tab up here you can control actually control the mouse pointer here the cursor so if I just find a location here you can see the cursor you can actually see that little crosshair the Photoshop brush cursor in here you can choose to hide that which is pretty awesome what we want to do is actually change this mouse cursor into a custom image which we will then you know use in After Effects so we have something that's a lot easier to track so how to replace it you just go to the pointer drop down here and just go all the way to the bottom and say choose image and I'm going to it's actually this one called custom cursor PNG it's a, a PNG with a transparent background so a circle with a wide circle in the middle and once you select whatever image you have it's going to be replaced so you can see what was before a little Photoshop cursor now is your custom <laughs> cursor and I think that's pretty cool alright so with that replaced all we need to do now is go to the video properties go to color controls and turn the brightness all the way down and now what you want to do is with this in point and out point set you go to file export selected range and I'm going to call it tracker just so I know because I will be exporting two files from this screenfield document one is this one where I'm just exporting the cursor that's moving around and the other one which we will export after this one which will be just the drawing without the cursor at all so yeah this one I will call tracker the one with the ball and I will save it in the let's see here let's say an appropriate folder tutorial tracker okay I'm just using the web high preset uh, it works alright uh, and customize that 30 frames per second I um, guess that's all right. In Denmark, we're usually running with 25, but uh, let's just go with 30. All right. And I'm going to export it at 100%. Select full resolution and just hit OK. Export. So now you'll see it's exporting this small portion here. And you can sing a little song if you want to, a little exporting song. Some folks ride like the wind, with the whispering pines to guide them, and the burning light inside them keeps them warm in the snow. Alright, that went fast. So that was the first one. And let's export the second one. So now, you want to go back to select your video down here, go to color controls, and crank it up to 100% in brightness again, so we can see our lovely drawing. And then go to the screen recording properties and, you know, just turn off the mouse pointer. So now we have absolutely no mouse pointer. Now it's just a line that's magically drawing itself. Creepy. Anyways, so now what we did want to do is export, go to file, export selected range once more. And instead of tracker, you should call this one something like, I'm just going to call it drawing. And save it at the same location with the same settings. Export. Others fear the sounds they hear make them be all right I'm just gonna spare you of more, any more singing in this tutorial I promise you that <laughs> so okay now we've exported both those videos I'm just gonna save this for fun and now you uh, just um, you know close screen flow now I am inside After Effects and I'm gonna bring up my project folder here and drag in the two uh, videos that we exported from ScreenFlow. So that is the drawing and the tracker. So I'm going to drag, I'm just going to drag those in here. Import it. All right. So I'm going to start off by take, dragging the tracker movie down to the new comp icon down here. And that's going to create a new comp uh, with the uh, tracker movie in it with our uh, custom cursor instead of the Photoshop cursor, which is pretty neat. All right, so we got to set up a tracker now to track this little green ball of doom that's jumping around there. So I'm going to select the layer down here and I'm going to 
open the tracker palette. If it's not open uh, for you, you just go to Window, Tracker. So you want to go and say Track Motion. And maybe you zoom in a little bit on your comp here. And you take this square thing that popped up and you sort of click outside on the large one and drag it over here. And then the trick is to you know, make it bigger. This big square here is like the registration area. Um, and this, the smaller area down here in the middle is sort of like, you want to set that to, uh, you know, to just be around this white one here in the middle. The wider you make this, the longer the more the longer time is going to take for the tracker to work because it has to analyze a lot more area. So, and if you make it really small, uh, if this green ball jumps out too far, the tracker is going to lose track, pun intended, uh, of the ball. So you might want to make it somewhere in between. Uh, it also depends on how fast the cursor is moving inside Photoshop, but let's just try and do something like this, shall we? Yeah, let's do that. And once you've set that, just click Analyze Forward. And you will see how, hopefully, the tracker keeps track of the green ball. Just gonna speed things up a little bit here. All right, so once the tracker is uh, done analyzing, and it can take a while, but you know, it's not work that, you're ha that you have to do, it's just the machine. So when it's done, it's a good idea just to, you know, take the playhead here and scrub back in time just to see if it's, if the tracker has kept track of the ball. Uh, let's just see here, it seems to be the case. It's always moving inside the square, which is what you want to be looking for. Awesome. So now what you want to do is go back to your main composition here, with the tracker in it. What I want to do is take the drawing video clip and drag it over on top of the tracker, like so. And then you want to import your hand. And I already, I made this hand already in Photoshop. So just drag that in here. I'm going to import it with merged layers as a footage file. All right, and I'm going to drag it, uh, that on top of the drawing movie. And then I'm going to press Y and click on the registration point, which is always as default on the center of the imported footage, and drag that up to the, to the tip of the pen, like that. I'm just gonna zoom in just to position it right here at the tip, like that. And then I'm going to, just gonna drag that aside. I'm just going to locate where the, where the first, where I'm first like starting to draw, which is like that point right there. And I'm going to drag the tip of the pen over that dot just to match it. And once it's there, you want to go to the tracker video layer down here, double click it, and in the tracker settings, you choose edit target and you set the target to be the hand, the Photoshop file of the hand. Click OK and then you click apply to the X and Y coordinates of the hand and click OK. And you might want to, you can see now the hand just moved up a little bit. So what I want to do now is select the hand, click A to bring up the anchor point properties and just and just going to zoom all the way in here so I can see the black dot and the tip of the pen and I'm going to try and change the values here first for the X and then for the Y just to get the tip down here again and now it's actually there looking this looks alright this could work and let's just see when we play it back, it's actually drawing. Just a quick little remark here. Um, you probably noticed this uh, gap between the the point where the cursor is and where the line is actually is. Um, so the line is sort of falling behind where the cursor is, and that is something that you can't really do anything about, as far as I know. Like if you have a fast computer, you might not have this problem, but I don't think my computer is. It's not the fastest one out there. So as you'll notice, if I just try and make a new document here, and 
when I'm drawing, you'll notice how the, the cursor is moving fine, but the line is sort of falling behind, as you probably notice here. Um, except if I'm going really slow, the line can keep up. But once I start to speed up, whoa, it's falling behind there. When you play back the animation that you're making, it, it looks it looks convincing, but you know if you stop at specific frames, you'll always get this uh, this gap here. Just uh, just to throw that in there, so you won't add, <laughs> write a bunch of questions that, uh, asking about this this gap here. Yeah, so that's uh, that's actually that. And if you want to be really funky about it all, you can select the hand and go to the effect controls and right click and go to perspective, uh, drop shadow, and add a little bit of uh, drop shadow to the hand. Uh, let's just set the distance to something like that, and just crank up the softness a lot, maybe like that. And that could work. And something else you can do is select the hand layer, press S, and then scale it down a little bit. You know, it depends on what size hand you want. Um, but maybe it looks a little bit better like this. And yeah. Okay, so let's just watch the result of our efforts here. Let me just play it back for you. I'm gonna start out by drawing a couple of eyes here. Oh, baby. Yep, could be a bicycle as well, but I think I'm gonna go with the eyes. You got a pretty funky nose there. And we have, oh yeah, let's make him happy. Let's make him happy. Some details in the eyes. And... So yeah, that was that. Thanks for watching this tutorial and I hope you found it useful and that it made sense. And remember to stay tuned for future tutorials from BarkVideo.com. We will be making more of this stuff here as we discover new and interesting things in the world of animation. So have a nice day.